Hi, welcome to Talknosis, a show about Gnosticism, about the ideas and history of Gnosticism, and anything else that might cross the threshold of what we Gnostics find interesting. Um, and specifically, some, somebody that I found really interesting is an online artist known as Night Growler. Uh, I'm Jason Bemmel, I'm one of the co-hosts, and joining us today is this fabulous Ukrainian artist known as Night Growler. Hey, Night Growler, say, hello, say hello. Greetings. <laughs> and, you know, uh, just in case anyone uh, is listening to the show who doesn't already know who you are. They're going to go check you out afterwards. But if they don't already know kind of what your your experience is or the, the stuff that you've put online, um, could you give just kind of a short summary of like where you're at and the kind of things you do? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I am a Ukrainian artist and uh, for quite some time, my most uh, famous work were, were uh, the stickers for the Telegram Messenger. Uh, and uh, that was my work for five years. Uh, and uh, by that time, uh, at the point of, uh, I guess, right before the pandemic started, uh, mm. I had some kind of the existential crisis and search, which uh, led me to discovering the world of uh, religion, magic, and rediscovering my personal purpose uh, as the artist. Mm, wow, that's a that's a great summary, but also like a really beautiful encapsulation there. And actually, I should say the way I think I first discovered your work was through uh, Telegram stickers of I think was it I think it was various versions of Alan Moore on the various stages of the Tree of Life. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> um, yep. So my first attempt to use a tree of life uh, as a tool um, mm. for the artistic purposes, uh, and uh, that was one of my first attempts to analyze it and uh, somehow uh, play with its meanings. Mm. The uh, the tree of life is one of those things. I think it, it's interesting because the um, uh, the at least how it's been used in Western esotericism has been defined by like it's i think it's best used as exactly as you said it as a process of discovering like of of uh learning it through associating with it if that makes sense yeah. um uh and i i'm a huge alan moore fan and so when uh when i think your work came came like got got public on the internet uh a bunch of my friends were like jason you need to see this and and so uh yeah i was immediately interested and i've been interested in in the stuff that you've made ever since um uh, but before I just gush about uh, about the about your work and the whole like art magic connection, um, so you've already kind of mentioned um, that you had this rediscovery during the pandemic or this this connection. Um, can you get any deeper into that? Like, was there anything specifically about about like Gnostic ideas or esoteric ideas that kind of that gave you kind of an aha moment? Like, this is it. This is the thing I'm connecting to. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, what what was the state in which I was at the time? Uh, I was like, I don't uh, call it a depression, but uh, it was really an uh, attempt to understand uh, what I am mm. and what I am doing here. Because uh, finding myself as a relatively successful artist, which... Uh, and draws uh, lots of characteristic uh, images was, I don't know, it, it may sound, uh, I felt like it was a joke. Uh, some mm -hmm. And because uh, I didn't uh, feel the seriousness of uh, the work uh, which I was doing, like, I was thinking about the people who uh, work at uh, medicine, who, who is saving lives, and like, what am I? I am drawing some funny, funny pictures which are meant to use use as emojis. I don't know, and it was my uh, kind of. Uh, you can even say a scream for meaning because mm. uh, 
it was felt like an attempt to emulate uh, something meaningful, but not making something meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because I was, one second, uh, because I was using uh, lots of funny references to, uh, I was drawing uh, lots of characters uh, depicted in different poses from famous memes, and it was like, uh, wow, Benjamin Franklin is depicted like uh, a guy from Futurama, which is uh, from the meme, shut up and take my money, and he mm. depicted on uh, those uh, 100 bucks uh, banknotes uh, which he is given, and like, haha, right, that was, uh, but I knew the structure behind my graphics, and it wasn't good enough for me. I was uh, feeling that it, it's not empty, but it's not deep. It's not deep enough mm. uh, in any of my attempts to somehow perceive it. So I was, uh, I was hungry for meaning. That was my state at that time. And uh, I was trying to understand what makes a work of art great. I was trying to understand what is the nature of masterpiece. I was trying to examine it uh, not through, so to say, uh, more traditional artistic uh, mediums like uh, I don't know, like uh, paintings of uh, Leonardo da Vinci or some classical music. I was trying to look at the more marginalized uh, mediums like comic books or video games, which are among uh, like uh, elders uh, viewed as uh, childish stuff. Uh, and I was trying to find uh, some hidden gems uh, in that area mm -hmm. and to understand what make uh, really what are ingredients of the masterpiece. And uh, at the time, I was a very big uh, fan of uh, Hideo Kojima video games and uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki, uh, who made the Dark Souls and uh, Bloodborne. And uh, among the comic books, my favorite author was uh, Alan Moore. And uh, trying to learn uh, as much as possible uh, about his works and about uh, himself. Uh, I've discovered that at his uh, 40th birthday, uh, he said that he is a magician. Hmm. And I was <laughs> yeah. trying to understand what was that. Was it a joke? Was it uh, like uh, just a high catchphrase? Or is there something behind uh, those words? And I began to dig deeper, and I've discovered his uh, essay, Fossil Angels. Uh, have you read it? Yes, I have, yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll, I'll summarize it here later for the audience, but uh, yes, yeah, it was a great, great essay. Yeah, uh, and it was uh, really a turning point in my life. My life is basically divided in two halves now, before Fossil Angels and after. Because wow. So, uh, that is say, uh, it's all about, uh, like, first half is uh, dedicated to the deconstruction of uh, different magic circles and magic, uh, like, groups, like uh, Golden Dawn, like, uh, different uh, Freemasonry and all this stuff. Uh, uh, and uh, there is lots of uh, critique of uh, those groups, of uh, many practices which are common in uh, magical circles uh, in our age. And the second half of essay is dedicated to the uh, solution which Moore provides to uh, bring magic uh, its former uh, grace and glory. And if one would summarize I'll say to one sentence, uh, it would be magic is art and art is magic. 
uh, and uh, for me it was a uh, very very significant reconnection with the thing which I was doing my whole life. Uh, I'm drawing since uh, I can remember myself. I uh, I always uh, was with a pencil or with a pen. And uh, it was a significant uh, part of my life, which uh, desperately lacked of meaning. Hmm. And uh, when I've discovered that kind of sight uh, on the uh, work of my life, uh, which is inflamed by spirit uh, and which gives uh, both power and responsibility because um, mm -hmm. you are uh, creating art of any sort, you are multiplying uh, some force in this world uh, because uh, when you are creating the art, you are channeling some of the states, ideas, spirits, uh, you name it. And mm -hmm. when uh, somebody encounters your art, uh, well, someone can just uh, pass on, but uh, there will be a person which will stop, which will ponder and which will resonate with it. Mm. And uh, things which you are putting in your work will be multiplied in someone. Uh, and you are, uh, as an artist, you are channeling something, what, mm -hmm. it, it, what it is. So, uh, yes, uh, my discovery of that essay was really a very significant turning point. And after it, uh, I read uh, Moose Promethea. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> big fan here. Tremendous work. Uh, it's. Uh, I love how it is a uh, huge introduction into the Western esoteric tradition, uh, and uh, it has a homework because uh, <laughs> if you are if you are watching carefully, uh, you can see. Uh, some book names which uh, you would like to read to understand this uh, comic book later uh, more more clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Promethea, uh, and she she's like a psychopomp for me, and uh, she. She was like a Hermes to me. She was, uh, you can say, my priestess in mm -hmm. the terms of uh, through through this book. Uh, I felt first uh, in deep connection to the divine, to something much much bigger and much higher than myself. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I mean. This is so much of what you're saying, I'm nodding along to, and the audience is probably hearing me me make sounds of assent and agreement. Um, I, I, I chuckled a little when you talked about Alan Moore calling himself a magician because I just remember the way he described it is uh, he's always kind of self-deprecating, and he think he said, like, rather than having a normal midlife crisis, I decided to yeah, go yeah, properly yeah. crazy and call myself a magician. Um, uh, I Yeah, I just love some of, what, some of the things that you mentioned there, uh, things I want to touch back on later. The only thing maybe that I want to ask right now, though, to kind of follow this thread um, of your of the from Promethea, is uh, from Promethea into into Gnosticism specifically, because I I think um, uh, this might be another thing we share, but I, I want to kind of hear how you how you got there. Um, there's the like one can become a Western esotericist and not really consider themselves a Gnostic, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, uh, was there maybe a way in particular that some of those ideas came in or that you discovered them and ways that they resonated for you? Well, uh, as for the Gnosticism, uh, my personal point of view on this phenomena is first of all through the lens of the very word and Gnosis mm -hmm. uh, means knowledge and uh, uh, for me, uh, Gnosis uh, is a very personal first of all process uh, and uh, I am in 
in funny kind of conflict uh, with some Gnostic uh, streams uh, because many and there are popular now uh, like Basilidians and uh, all that stuff uh, when people just read in the scripture and uh, take it for granted and uh, they are just going online and are ranting about how Demiurge is uh, our enemy and we should uh, just transcend the matter and uh, all this stuff. So it's, uh, for me, uh, Gnosis is, can be, uh, I don't know, the, the personal insights can vary on a so broad level that uh, your noses can be uh, very different from mine, but uh, they are like equal in, uh, in terms of uh, their trueness. I don't know. Um, mm. it makes makes sense. So it does. Yeah, it, I think there's a. Um... Uh, there's sort of like what I would call a dictionary definition Gnosticism or Gnosis where um, uh, like it's how you can use to classify classical Gnosticism and certain groups and like there's a um, and then there's I think um, Gnosis uh, the, the way I often describe it is that there's Gnosis the the historical or classical definition and then there's Gnosticism or Gnosis the genre <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. and and the genre of gnosis or the genre of gnosticism is is uh it can be frustratingly broad because i think it's anything that feels like it's this striving for a connection striving through difficulty to a connection um can all, can all come under that umbrella and that and that there aren't um uh there aren't new like so one thing that i've often um one of my own not arguments, but the position I often make when I'm discussing Gnosticism online is that, uh, for me, the appeal of this isn't to find a new set of rules that can replace the old set of rules that a, that a different religion would offer, but that it's a it's a chance to have a more multiplicity sense of a view, you know, and so that um, it's not about seeing the demiurge and the archons as as a, um, proof that the world is bad and therefore something to be escaped but as a description or a way to engage with difficulty, you know, um, mm -hmm. at its best, I think it, it, they're at their most useful when they can be used as a way to point to and describe a problem. Um, but, uh, but when they become proof that, that those, that those problems are a reason to leave the world, then that that's, I think where it gets, it's less useful well, for um... me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's partly the uh, dangers of uh, Gnostic movements, uh, which I see, because uh, some of these uh, are sounding like uh, the escapist fantasy, and uh, it's like, well, uh, if you would think uh, like matter is bad, and uh, we should transcend it and uh, okay if we are transcending matter then we are transcending the time and if we are transcending both of these uh, then we are in eternal bliss but how do we know uh, that it is eternal if we don't know the time and uh, well few eternities later you just end up uh, once again in matter because <laughs> that's the only place when idea uh, ideas can manifest. Mm, so that's interesting. For me personally, uh, there is no escape of samsara. Like uh, I see in this world as uh, as an opportunity for ideas to to live, uh, and uh, I see. Uh, Gnosticism uh, and Gnosis as a process uh, as kind of tool uh, to embody those ideas which are resonating with you. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, a toolkit to how to have a conversation with them. Uh, mm -hmm. How to like uh, 
if you look at the classical uh, planets as uh, the gods uh, and uh, for example venus uh, she embodies love she embodies beauty she embodies art she embodies emotions and uh, these are living forces which are not like uh, they uh, you can communicate with them uh, but it's not um, direct conversation you need to learn how to uh, channel love and beauty through yourself you mm-hmm. need to, to learn how to channel uh, cleverness of mercury or charity of jupiter or even uh, aggressiveness of mars when it's needed because uh for quite some time i had very pacifistic worldview i was like uh Uh, only against all military uh, activity and uh, reality around me uh, showed me that uh, the sphere of Gibura uh, on the Tree of Light uh, means a lot uh, and mm. the, uh, defense and uh, power uh, are very valuable uh, very valuable ingredients of existence too mm. so That's really interesting. It, it, it almost like it, uh, there, there's a part of me that wants to say like, um, because I think like there's a reason why it's a, it's a very appealing, um, framework to, to, to just say we live in a prison planet and we need to escape. You know, I think there's a reason that's attractive. Um, maybe the thing I might offer to anyone listening who does feel that way or, or feels compelled by that is to think, um, if you if you take out the assumption then that that uh that we must escape the prison then it like i guess the question is how do you engage with this world around you because you're you're in it anyway if that makes sense um yeah, yeah. and like yeah so what what is it about these things around you that you can interact with like there's also the other thing too of like uh there's all the, the phrase the map is not the territory um yeah. And I think like so often when we're talking about any of these symbols and systems, they are maps, you know, um, they are not the territory you're walking. And so, and you define a map by its usefulness, you know, um, yeah. if the map, uh, is, is leading you to places that are no longer like that are disconnecting you say from friends and family, they're disconnecting you from positive emotions, then it's not a, it's, it's becomes a dangerous map, <laughs> you know, um, But, uh, yeah, I think like definitely I would, I would ask anybody to like engage with why you find that so compelling and see if there's a way to transform that into positive engagement. And in fact, talking about transforming, maybe this is a good segue here. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of what, uh, going back to Alan Moore's art is magic thing. And I think your own work. Um, so, uh, a quick preface here is that my own interest in Gnosticism, the reason I became compelled by it as a system to explore wasn't because it explained why the world was bad, but because its core idea of like a divine spark and, a um, and a sense of knowing that is not, that can't be learned, but can be, can still be strived for is actually what I feel when I'm making theater, particularly when a show really works. Um, that to me is like the little, you know, the the little brushing of the feathers of gnosis on over my skull that's what that feels like you know yeah um i know pieces fit uh like from the tools uh schism if, if i remember that correctly uh just just a quote mm. and all that pieces fit that's uh the state in which uh i am where uh when uh my drawing uh hits my heart when uh, everything is like uh all symbols all colors so uh, composition when uh, everything is perfect uh in that artistic process uh there is a state of solid puzzle uh, in mm. uh, and that's uh how i feel uh, that you know, the thing in which you are describing Yeah. Like, and I think, uh, that is that experience, like of feeling that connection, um, through art is, I think, um, like when you talk about, we were talking about transforming these, uh, 
some of these the feelings we have about the world into something useful i think like art by its nature does that like it by its nature is this crucible whether it's theater or illustration or comics or you know um uh because and and i would also even argue that like artists that are that might not even see themselves as as religious in any way but yet are still creating work that people are profoundly moved by have yeah. contributed to that process um and that like that experience whether it's whether it's explicitly art or or like solely art just trying to say no we're not religious over here we're just telling a story or we're just making a painting or or deeply intentionally esoteric i think they're they're just um stages across a spectrum of of a of, a, of an experience that is that they're they're all pointing to the same experience yeah uh, i think that uh, many problems can so can be solved by just uh, making equal the terms uh, spirit and idea because mm -hmm. uh, if you are uh, putting a sign of equality between them uh, between between them uh, many things uh, for modern uh, society uh, become much much clearer in the terms of uh, religion or magic because if you are looking at uh, i don't know uh angelic hierarchies uh, through this lens like uh, an attempt uh, to categorize uh, what are uh, ideas out there in the realm of ideas and it uh, becomes very very clear you are looking for i don't know uh, are you familiar with uh, shem hameforash angels um vaguely <laughs> it's uh, 72 angels uh, uh. And uh, there is a legend that uh, these were used by uh, King Solomon uh, in building his temple. Uh, or someone says that uh, yeah, there was Gaisha demons, but that doesn't matter really. Uh, and uh, these are basically uh, uh, divisions of the zodiac circle to the 72 uh, angels. Mm -hmm. And uh, by five degrees each. Uh, and uh, these are uh, uh, each of them have uh, his responsibilities, and uh, you can see them as uh, personifications of different uh, areas of life, uh, of different uh, aspects of uh, human psyche. And uh, once again, if you are equating uh, ideas with spirits it's uh it, it becomes much clearer for me mm. there's something interesting here too like one thing um uh like often uh like we'll see this online or, or just in general and in uh, esoteric and spiritual discussions of people trying to uh, like uh trying to to line up what the truth is what a single you know like uh what do all gnostics believe this is often a common question on on social media um Exactly. Yeah. And which, uh, like, and I, my, um, uh, anyone who hasn't seen me post this many times, my response is usually like, ask three Gnostics, get six answers. Um, <laughs> yep. uh, but, um, the, the one thing that I find interesting is what, when you shift the con or when you, when you start to say, what if these are the same thing, art and, uh, and magic or art and, and spirit, um, is that when debating, the the quality of say different movies or books or paintings or things like that we never assume that um one of them has to be true and the other has to be false it's more like they have different merits or different levels of merits or what have you like we might say that movie would was not effective for the following reasons you know it, it pandered to the audience it did etc cetera, etc cetera. um but at no point do we have to say that movie is false because it's in most cases already fiction. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's yeah. no less false than it was before. Um, uh, it just is. It just is exactly. And it's, and if it's not effective, then people can go, yeah, great. It wasn't, it wasn't an effective version of telling that story. Move on versus saying, no, I need to tell you that this is completely negatively wrong and shouldn't exist. That's, that's often, I think a, difference that often happens in esoteric conversations and uh, and i think it's it's unnecessary sorry go ahead 
uh, I think that uh, debates around the art or around the esoteric ideas uh, or anything uh, often are saying much more about uh, the thing, the people which are commenting these things uh, than about the things themselves. Exactly, and I, what I what I think would be probably more effective for for everyone involved would be to say rather than trying to debate whether or not the following things are true it would be more like debating which are the follow which of the following things do you find useful or not useful you know yeah yep. um uh and then and then we're starting to actually talk about the ideas kind of almost again you're saying about spirit versus uh idea um which are i think again lines on the or um marks on the same spectrum yeah. Um, yep. Uh so what okay, sorry, this was great. We we kind of dra traveled off of my initial <laughs> my initial uh, outline, which is fine. Um but uh the so in terms of the things that you're that you're thinking about now. So we've kind of talked about your your past and how you came into a lot of this. What uh what are some some particular things like either personal projects or other people's work that you're that you're interested in? Is there anything that's kind of capturing your attention right now? Well, uh I am focused uh, mostly on three things right now. Uh, among my projects, uh, that's first of all the uh, Terra deck, which I am. Uh, well, what is uh, it is uh -huh. uh, four years ago uh, e. on twenty first September, if I'm not wrong. So. Uh, nearly, nearly f four years ago, I decided that I will uh, draw my uh, version of the tarot deck. Mm. Uh, I thought it will take uh, half a year. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> that that was my biggest joke on me. Uh, and uh, half of a year, I was just trying to build up basic understanding of what uh, a tarot is because uh, there are if you are an artist and if you want to draw your own uh, tarot deck uh, I would suggest uh, three decks uh, among which uh, one would uh, choose uh, the deck which would be the reference point mm -hmm. these are the uh, Marcel deck uh, it's the oldest one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's like not uh, the oldest in the world, but it's uh, oldest esoteric and uh, on which there are lots of materials uh, which you can learn. Mm. Uh, uh, the second one is most popular. Uh, it's uh, Rider Waite Smith uh, Tarot. And uh, the third one is uh, Thor's Tarot, which was. Uh, uh, it was made by Alistair Crowley and uh, painted by Lady Frida Harris. Mm. And uh, it's most complex and most insane deck uh, among those three. <laughs> and I haven't hesitated with my choice. Uh, it was instant toast parrot. And uh, I bought a deck, I bought the Book of Souls, uh, which is like uh, not these little books uh, which you can find with regular decks. Uh, and uh, it's like... Uh... <laughs> it's a big book. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. big book. I've read, uh, I don't know, it was like a hundred of pages. And uh, I went and bought a book... Uh, how to read uh, Book of Souls. Uh, <laughs> wonderful book. book. Well, <laughs> wonderful book. Uh, Understanding Thor's Tarot uh, by Elon yeah. Myla Duquette. It's, uh, it's good introduction to that because that's insane. Oh, yeah. He, that, uh, Lon's, uh, Lon's w w way of explaining Crowley is often, I find, more more interesting to me than Crowley himself. I, uh, uh, I uh, had a... Uh, we we did an earlier show and maybe I'll send you the link to it. But I I read my way through um, Crowley's Big Blue Book. Uh, I think like Magic in Theory and Practice. I think or it's like Book yep. Four. Um, yep. And uh, you know um, and I actually I read it because Alan Moore references Alan Crowley a lot. 
And uh, by the time I was done, I was like, I think there's a lot of good ideas in here, but I think there's also a lot of a guy trying to start an organization that would keep him in money. <laughs> like that's, and I, that we, I, I won't necessarily debate Crowley right, with you right now, but because uh, I want to keep it focused on you. Um, but uh, maybe one thing I should mention is that you're working on these cards on your Patreon, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say before we before you get into too much detail there, let's maybe take a quick break because um, I want you to give me your Patreon link so I can put it in the in the show notes. Okay. Um, I'll just pause the the video for a second and then. We'll come right back. Okay. Okay, yeah. So now we're back. Uh, I got the link here to Night Growler's Patreon where he's doing um, a lot of esoteric art, but also specifically building that tarot deck uh, as as uh, as you heard about. And it's, uh, it's at patreon.com slash nightgrowler. Um, again, that's patreon.com slash nightgrowler. We'll have this in the show notes. Um, so it's easy to find there. And I mean, if you're uh, if you're interested in contributing to various esoteric artists and shows and content, then I would also suggest Talk Gnosis. <laughs> I think we do a pretty good job here of trying to give a pretty broad view, but a deep view on uh, on a lot of Gnostic ideas. And so, um, and actually, for a limited time now, if you contribute to our Patreon, uh, Patreon.com/slash Gnostic, or uh, PayPal.me/slash Gnostic, um, either one, the smallest amount, we promise you, you will immediately achieve. Um, genius artistic skill and gnosis, uh, one time only. Um, at the moment you're listening to this recording, I promise that'll happen. Um, uh, any complaints, you can contact John at uh, what's what does he joke? Uh, John at gnosticwisdom.net. <laughs> I don't think that email exists, but uh, yeah. So, um, again, if you want to contribute um, to uh, to Nightcrawler's work, I strongly recommend it because it's beautiful. Um, Nothing happened. Uh, oh yeah. Little uh, my uh, signal lost. For yeah, time. I think you're back now, though. So we'll uh, we'll keep our our fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, uh, I think so. I interrupted us for us to talk about your Patreon, so you could you could uh, promote that. But yeah, so what other projects? Uh, what other things are you have you been interested in lately? Uh, so yeah, uh, three main uh, directions in, in which I'm heading is uh, are. Uh, a terror deck, uh, uh, planetary uh, talismans, and uh, not all of them are planetary, but mostly planetary uh, talismans, and uh, a secret project uh, on which I'm working, but not uh, secret anymore, uh, <laughs> is uh, a magic alphabet, which is based on the Ukrainian language. Ooh, uh, that's uh, something very important to me because uh, I see this as my personal contribution to the Ukrainian uh, magic and cultural area. Um, and because now uh, Ukrainian language is a very special one. Uh, first of all, it's uh, very famous for uh, how does it sound because it's very singing language. Uh, it's uh, it has uh, lots of uh, just phonetic beauty. Uh, one I might say. Mm. Uh, the second reason is uh, that uh, Ukrainian alphabet has uh, thirty-three. Uh, uh, Letters. I'm sorry. I no, no, that's okay. Uh, just love the word. Uh, I thought there's uh, I thought there's three letters, which uh, are pretty much uh, powerful in their number because uh, the thing which I uh, one day uh, found there is that thirty three is basically uh, seven plus four. Uh, X3, which is seven planets, four elements in three states. And mm. uh, for those who are familiar with structures like uh, Tarot and uh, Kabbalistic structures, different, uh, those can uh, easily see how uh, potent this formula is. And uh, now I'm trying to, to develop 
an alphabet which would be uh, like stylistically i am uh, i'm i'm inspired by american alphabets and by the uh really of sculptures uh, which are here in ukraine and some uh, uh do you know about trichilia uh, i don't know if i do it's uh ancient civilization trichilian culture uh, trichilian cucutelli uh, if i remember that correctly uh that's pronounced uh, uh it was if if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, on the time when uh, Mesopotamia was flourishing. Uh, mm. It was like the age of Taurus uh, if, uh, in terms of the uh, Platonic year. Uh, 3000 BC? I don't know. I can't uh, say that correctly right now but uh, but that's a, yeah yeah we'll uh we, we'll we'll add links to the in the show notes for the yeah. for the specific uh, detail yeah uh, trichilian culture uh was a civilization which uh was located on the uh territory of modern ukraine and uh it was very interesting culture which uh, has left uh, many artifacts with with the uh, their main god was a bull, if uh, I remember that correctly, and uh, they had a very beautiful uh, goddess images. And I want to incorporate uh, those ancient motifs in uh, that alphabet too, uh, because uh, I feel that uh, this connection between art and magic uh, is is like a building block for our reality because art is very linguistic tool uh, you are uh, manipulating symbols you are manipulating uh, some material which uh, should communicate to the viewer some of ideas and it's it's linguistic uh, on its uh, structural level so i want to provide uh, my people with a tool which uh, which will uh, channel both beauty and meaning and that's for me the ba basis of magic mm, i love that i love that so much um there's a uh there's something i think in any esoteric or spiritual practice that I think does feel to me, like if there's one unifying thing I could say that is generally true, is that you need to make it your own. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And what you're doing here is making it your own in a very deep and fundamental way because it's connected, as you say, to language, to how we process the world. I'm, I'm absolutely, yeah, fascinated by that and can't wait to hear more. We'll have to have you on the show again as that project develops to 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 get deeper just even into that project um oh, uh, on patreon oh and yes exactly on patreon as well um there... uh about the talismans oh uh, yeah here is a jupiterian one uh it has a, a magic square of jupiter oh and cool it, it doesn't look like focused but anyway uh, and on the other side, it has a tetramorph, uh, which is a combination of the eagle. Uh, he has the eagle's wings, uh, a bull, a bull's mm -hmm. horn, a, a lion, lion's mane, and uh, a human with a human face. Mm -hmm. So uh, these uh, are four creatures from the Ezekiel's uh, vision, and uh, they are in all churches, but uh as far as i know uh those are just a full depictions of the four elements and uh fix it to the zodiacal cross like uh, leo taurus aquarius and scorpio which is uh represented by ego hmm. uh to anyone watching or sorry anyone listening i i think um he did a great job generally describing what's there but you're going to need to, I think, either watch the video or go check out uh, his Patreon to see the just exactly how cool those things are. Because it's 
that's a beautiful item there. And again, that notion of making something, but making it through your own understanding and processing of it. Um, one thing, like one critique I sort of see myself when I, when I look at my own art is magic line is that I think some, some can say, well, it's all just, it, it makes everything a little too relative, like that there's no, it's all just how you might feel about it. Now, and I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I'm saying I can see that as a critique, um, that there's no, there's no grounding to it. Um, and where I'm going with this is that, um, the, the sort of the momentum of context lends a, a framework that of things that become useful again going to that thing of like not what is true but what is useful the um the momentum of context around your culture and your um experiences the things that are that are both positive and negative all of those things uh contribute to the to the sort of the constellation of symbols that then become a thing that escapes those symbols or goes beyond those symbols it transcends exactly yeah yeah um and I, I, sorry, I just had to express how I, how I'm, I'm so fascinated by the, by both the specificity and universality of the thing that you're making. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, any artistic project, uh, be it, uh, I don't know, song, painting, a sculpture, uh, theater play, uh, anything is yeah. like a forging a vessel for the, uh, point of the space time. Uh, like uh, you are uh, a spectator uh, of the universe and uh, you are experiencing it and when you are uh, making a work of art uh, this very unique and very special point of view which is uh, from your consciousness uh, it's like entrapped in uh, the artifact which you are making mm. and this brings us kind of to the theme of the demiurge uh, mm. because uh, the demiurge uh, is basically the craftsman uh, mm. that's uh, kind of uh, I like uh, uh, some kind of pro demiurge position uh, <laughs> because a very, a very controversial position. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and uh, I'll give a little context on my personal relationships with this uh, deity. Uh, when I first uh, discovered it, uh, it was like, wow, what a cool design. Uh, what uh, a context do we have here? And uh, I'm reading description, I'm reading that, uh, okay, some kind of false god, which was uh, described by uh, early Gnostics, and I was like, okay, sounds boring, I don't uh, resonate with that in any way, uh, at that moment, that was my thought. But uh, the image, uh, in some sort, uh, have captured me, uh, and uh, I live uh, through my art. I uh, process many things through my art, and uh, for me, uh, to draw a thing is uh, to not to say to know a thing, but uh, to know a thing a bit more than before. <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember that one night uh, I sat uh, by my desktop and uh, after a few hours I, uh, I was sitting and pondering uh, a kind of Ouroboros-like uh, image of the uh, uh, Demiurge, uh, but no. Uh, it was a uh, lion serpent biting its tail, uh, not in a circle or manner like uh, classic Ouroboros, but uh, that's what I drew. And uh, I was, okay, uh, you've captured my attention, what do you want? <laughs> uh, that was my relation to, to this uh, spirit deity, I don't know like how to put this. And uh, some time ago, um uh, I've heard that uh, mantra EAO was related to the Demiurge. Uh, mm. 
because on uh, various uh, Gnostic gems uh, there was depicted a lion serpent and uh, it was uh, usually uh, accompanied, uh, accompanied by the letters E-A-O uh, and often on the reverse uh, there was uh, an image of the Abraxas or Abrasax and uh, I was like uh, okay uh, I just put on the background uh, mantra yao and uh, sit it and uh, I began to draw and uh, in that uh, process uh, two things happened uh, first I uh, remembered that uh, letters e a o in Greek are standing for the uh, e for the sun a for the moon and O, uh, Omega, uh, for the Saturn. And uh, this formula, it's like encapsulating all uh, range of the classical planets uh, with the sun at the center. Mm. Uh, and I was like, okay, that's a bit deeper. <laughs> uh, and that's interesting. And the uh, second thing which happened that night uh, was that I unconsciously uh, enveloped uh, the form of that uh, Demiurge figure in the letters E-A-O. Uh, I'll uh, show uh, an image later and I think you could uh, add this to the uh, YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so, uh, the next uh, thing which happened was uh, a little article uh, which was about the so-called Gnostic ring of Carl Gustav Jung. Mm. Carl Gustav Jung uh, is a very significant person in my uh, research and uh, my approach to all spiritual matters because uh, I feel his work uh, very profound and very insightful. Uh, he he was a tremendous uh, thinker, and uh, by that article, uh, it says that uh, Jung held uh, his favorite ring uh, from the Egypt, which was depicting uh, Ethnobis, uh, that was uh, the name for the deity in that article and I began to google that and uh, it was saying that Nobis was uh, a um, Egyptian Gnostic uh, deity which was looking like a serpent with a lion's head uh, possibly it was deriving from the Nun uh, Egyptian god with the uh, head of the god which uh, god uh, like front one uh, which was uh, a deity uh, which was a potter. Uh, by the legend, uh, it was Knun who uh, made people from clay, mm -hmm. which is uh, in a funny way resonating with the idea that uh, Demiurge is a tetragrammaton, uh, which made people from the clay and uh, all that... Uh, old Genesis story. So uh, I was like, okay, if that guy was on the favorite ring of Carl Gustav Jung, I should pay some attention to to this uh, figure because uh, I don't see possibility for a false and blind god to be placed on the favorite ring of the Carl Gustav Jung. And uh, next time I encountered it uh, was uh, on the Terrat Tower, uh, Terrat Major Arcana Tower. Uh, it was depicted there and uh, in the description it says that uh, yes, it's an obis. And uh, it is a combination of two, of two astrological signs like Leo and Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio has three images. It's uh, Scorpion, a serpent, and Ego. It's like evolutionary uh, mm -hmm. 
process because Scorpio resembles uh, death and rebirth. Uh, and by the combination of the Leo and uh, Scorpio, this figure symbolizes uh, the will to live combined with will to die. And I was like, okay, so we have Schopenhauer here, if <laughs> I, I'm correct. <laughs> uh, that's look, that looks uh, much more appropriate for the Carl Jung to, uh, to have as a favorite symbol. Mm -hmm. But it was still not enough for me. But uh, at that point, I was uh, playing in uh, with different drawings of uh, the deity. And uh, on some day, uh, I was uh, meditating. Uh, I was meditating with uh, some kind of sun bath. Uh, that was first time when I decided to sit and meditate uh, with. Uh, open sun rays uh, uh, which were like uh, shining on me mm. and uh, at some point I saw like mm, one could say it was like a photograph uh, of the 4D universe where uh, for a dimension is uh, time mm. And uh, in 4D, uh, this wouldn't be a hand. This would be like a spaghetti, uh, some sort, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, a trail of the cursor uh, on Windows uh, XP, where you have this uh, <laughs> funny trail. Yeah, and, and on that kind of photograph, I saw. Uh, the trail of the sun in the space-time as a serpent's body, as a fiery serpent. E. And uh, the sun orb itself uh, with fiery mane as a lion's head. E. And I felt that the figure of the lion serpent is first and foremost uh, a depiction of the sun and uh, I was familiar that it was a solar deity uh, and uh, which is funny it's uh, even resonates with the Gnostic perspective on it because sun is uh, basically the force which is responsible uh, for human life emerging in the first place because uh, before being born, born here, where uh, our souls were dwelling, they, they were in a realm of the possibility. They were in some kind of pleroma and uh, sun providing uh, those circumstances for life to emerge, it kind of captured us, yes, but... Uh, if you would think about the uh, life of uh, early Gnostics, which were uh, people of the desert uh, in very warm uh, area, uh, there's no wonder that uh, they would see a sun as a malevolent force, e burning to, which is draining the lands and to destroying. Uh, so, um, from that time, I had carved, uh, for myself. This oh, amber, so cool. This amber, uh, talisman, which depicts, uh, that artisan God. Mm. And, um, uh, I think, uh, that it resonates with me so much, uh, partly because of the artistic nature of the Demiurge figure. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yes, there is evil in this world. The, there is lots of evil in this world, and I have witnessed some. But nevertheless, uh, all of that evil uh, is... Uh, necessary 
for the experience of the opposite side of the evil, uh, for the experience of the good, because mm. only in contrast we can uh, really feel something, uh, because if uh, one lives in constantly stagnant uh, some evil phase, it just becomes normal. If someone lives in a constantly good phase, it just becomes normal. And uh, we we can see both of, the, of these examples in uh, our present world because uh, we can see how someone doesn't recognize the uh, good circumstances in which uh, they are just because they are too much... Uh, what is the word? Uh, they are used to it. In, it's just uh, comfortable uh, some circumstances in which uh, they are becoming mad and uh, just like, you know, all these videos where uh, people are just uh, throwing food at the floor and ha ha ha, that's so fun. Fuck me. I'm sorry for my language, but no, that's uh, okay. There are uh, in in Ukrainian history, recent history. Uh, it was thirties uh, uh, years of uh, last century, uh, where there was a huge, uh, huge famine, uh, which was basically constructed by the USSR government. Uh, and uh, we have some some flashbacks from from that and uh, that Ukrainian history is, is a hard topic. That's, uh, it's, uh... Well, and and this is the thing is that like what I find so striking about what you've talked about, like the way you kind of took us through how you encountered. The demiurge figure and like to, uh, up to building a talisman of it is uh striking because you are living through a circumstance that would it would be easy for you to to take a to take a position where you can just blame the demiurge for it you know um and the fact that you don't uh and that you're actually trying to find a way to process it and go through it is for one thing, brave. I think I, I want to commend you for that. I think that's really impressive. And I think uh, for the other is, again, points to, um, to again, I think maybe that artistic process. How do I, how do I process this? How do I take what's happening and make it into something that is of use, that is, that, that connects, that makes connections with others? Um, I'm, I think that's just a, a powerful experience. And uh, yeah, like, again, I just, uh, uh, it, to to anyone anyone listening to this at some point in the future when perhaps this isn't currently an issue, um, yeah, like uh, you're you're living in a city that is currently under attack, that might have an airstrike at any time, and you are nonetheless um, uh, processing that into art, into connection. And again, I just yeah, I have to just say how how beautiful I think that is. Um, there is one thing, and I I am. I, I actually kind of wish my co-host John was here um, because he's got a stronger handle on on a whole lot of other uh, philosophical positions than I do. There's there's sometimes again an, a Gnostic critique uh, of what you said there regarding um, the okay. the like you need both good and bad so that it can highlight the good. Um, sometimes that can that can turn into its own kind of fatalism. You know what I mean? Like. We shouldn't do anything about the bad because we need it for the good kind of thing. Um, and I, I, I don't necessarily have a direct answer for that. Um, I think maybe I might say that there is a, if we, my response when you mentioned it was that if we see the Demiurge as an artist, as a, as a creative figure, um, I think uh, that they can be trying to create something beautiful and they, and you do often need, like this is basic art. You need contrast for something to pop out that contrast might not necessarily need to be things that, that are bad or evil or what have you, but they, um, uh, but a contrast is still maybe needed or is for it to be sublime. It needs a contrast. Uh, 
but the other the other thing I'm going here with here too is if we're going to say that the demiurge is an artist, then I think like any artist, we can critique them. <laughs> you know, we can critique them without hating them, um, or without needing them to be an enemy. Um, uh, which is again, I mean, how many times do we see people uh, attacking, say, a filmmaker because they didn't like the movie? You know, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. There's a uh, uh, or they didn't like a part of a movie, and I think there's there is something there. I'm I kind of, I'm kind of rambling around my point here, but I think there is something there about seeing seeing it as a process, seeing it as a thing that needs to be um, engaged with, seeing the seeing things that are wrong as a thing that you can both engage with, but that it's also part of that overall story. Cool. Oh, yeah. Popped again there. You're back. You're okay. But yeah. that just had a brief internet pop. <laughs> um, uh, last thing I heard was the the part of you were saying. Um, um, I'm not sure exactly where you popped out, but um, the the again again I think maybe the, just the shortest version is that the uh, the the part of the world's the the part of the world that we live in that has negative qualities can be both something that helps highlight the good and can be a thing we can still critique about the world and and make efforts to change. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think that uh, one shouldn't uh, do anything about uh, the things uh, which one perceives as uh, an evil because, uh, like, first of all, it wouldn't be authentic and fair uh it wouldn't be true to ourselves just to stay and look uh, on the evil deeds uh and the um and the second thing uh, about this i think that uh those things are balanced on a scale and level which is uh, slightly um behind our comprehension Mm. I think that uh, that's such an eternal process that uh, the symbol of the yin yan uh, it's one of the best uh, artworks in the world. Like it's it depicts how this uh, eternal thing is, uh, how the opposites are uh, the source of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and as for the circumstances in which uh, I am right now, uh, the thing which I would uh, like to say is uh, the biggest uh, thanks to the Ukrainian army forces and all uh, supporters of the Ukraine, because uh, like uh, no one knows how uh how deep the hole in the, in the russian chest goes the, um, that's uh like uh, there are many many uh many events in this war uh which are really a showcase uh of how far uh human human can go in their evil deeds uh and uh like uh do you know about the explosion on, on the uh Kahoka dam uh i think i did hear about that yes yeah uh that's one of the biggest uh catastrophes uh, of this war and mm -hmm. uh no one knows how long we will uh, deal with uh, consequences of that uh, and uh, most uh, shocking thing is that it's not the first time when Russians are doing this because it was uh, if I remember that correctly uh, uh, in the times of the second world war uh, or maybe uh, in another timeline but uh, it happened uh, already and uh, it was a shock for the whole world, but it wasn't a shock for us. 
because uh, we are dealing with it uh, for quite some time and uh, like uh, when uh, the war uh, began uh, my first thought was that uh, okay so it is over because uh, we couldn't stand and the things which uh, Russians will do to us will be extremely bad and they were extremely bad in those areas uh, from uh, which they fled. Uh, there are lots of uh, evidences of the uh, punishment basements of I don't know that's 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 just uh, it's a bit hard for me to to even uh, talk about it because uh, I remember how how uh, there is uh, there are two little uh, cities near Kiev uh, which are called Lucha and Irpin mm. and uh, I remember uh, the night when uh, there was a battle for these cities. Uh, because uh, whole night I was uh, hearing an explosions. Uh, I was in basement, and uh, and uh, I remember that it was Thursday. I remember that it was Thursday. Uh, Thursday because uh, because I'm orienting by the planets uh, and. Mm -hmm. You know, all the stuff that uh, days of the week are for the planets. Uh, mm -hmm. Monday for Moon, uh, Tuesday for Mars, Wednesday for Mercury, uh, Thursdays for the Jupiter. Mm. Uh, I remember that uh, because uh, in the time of need, first thing on which I am looking is uh, day of the week. And that's like a deity to call for me. Uh, and uh, art is my prayer and on that night uh, you, you, you can sleep uh, in such circumstances so I took my iPad and I began to draw uh, and I began to draw as under God uh, not a specific one but mostly focusing on the Slavic uh, version of uh, the Jupiterian archetype, which is Perun. He, Perun, uh, he has uh, as his weapon an axe. And uh, I began to draw him uh, from the little lightnings, like combining uh, lots of lightning uh, so it would uh, look like he is made of thunder. And uh, each time when I was hearing uh, the explosion outside, uh, the worst part of it is that you don't know which side uh, is uh, losing, which side is winning. You just mm -hmm. hear that uh, battlefield is there. And uh, I was drawing that Perron image. And uh, hearing each explosion, I drew a new thunder, and I was imagining that uh, it is a baron through the uh, arms and weapons of our soldiers is punishing uh, Russian invaders because baron is a god of war, mm -hmm. and those people with their deeds they are spoiling the very concept of war as a political tool uh, because uh, they are doing it in very unjust way. It mm -hmm. can be a method, but not in this way. And uh, I remember that a poem uh, emerged in my heart that night it sounded like the earth is trembling all the night. I make my prayer to thunder God. Punish unjust, 
with holy light. Perun, O Zeus, Almighty Lord, you have a thousand holy names. The lightning is your accent spear. Protect my land, my people's spades, and make the enemy disappear. And a few days after, uh, there were news that Russians are pleading those regions. And there were lots of moments like this uh, with weirdest synchronicities between courses uh, to, to which I dedicated my work and uh, the events which were surrounded surrounding uh, those times. Uh, and well, that's, sorry. That's, that's my experience of a mystic going to through the, these circumstances. That's... I, again, I can't, uh, I can't express enough how, how brave I find that. Um, I think as well, like, because uh, I, I often mix up how this works, but there's the term spiritual bypassing, where um, rather than acknowledging a feeling, you might, uh, not you, but like someone might use uh, their spiritual knowledge or background as a, as a way to explain away a feeling or, you know, justify a reaction or what have you. I think what I'm finding so fascinating about what you're doing is that it's, um, again, it's about processing. It's about trying to understand something through creating something. Um, integrate. Pardon me? And integrate. And, and integrate. Exactly. Exactly. And to, you know, in, in very many ways they're, they, they are related like you to, to process it is to integrate it like the, um, and yeah, I think, again, I just can't say enough about how brave I find that and, and, uh, and how thankful I am to be, to have a chance to talk to you both about your work in general, but also how you're making that work in this, in this really difficult situation. Um, uh, I think we've had a really good conversation here. I think we can have more, so we'll have you on again for sure. But, um, I think in the, for the, for the moment we might draw to a close. Is there anything maybe that you haven't talked about in terms of your projects that you'd like to tell people about or, or anything like that? Um, uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, really, uh, it's emotional moment for me and I am trying to, to, to get back on the track. Uh, I'm sorry. I feel like maybe I, I uh, threw us to a close too quickly there. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, that's just, uh, like difficult, uh, difficult thing uh, mm -hmm. about the bravery. Uh, once again, I would like to, 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 uh, thank. Uh, for that, first of all, uh, military forces, because uh, if not uh, all of them, if not our heroes, I wouldn't breathe right now. I am mm. sure on that. Uh, and uh, what I would like uh, to say is that uh, really... I would suggest uh, to anyone to become familiar with uh, Mr. Moore's work because mm -hmm. it's uh, it's inspiring in very undoubtful way because uh, I had some esoteric background, but it was it was uh, from a small community in a small town, and it was uh, made. Uh, mostly from cringe because uh, <laughs> that's like a very new agey uh, company was and it was uh, all about that let us meditate let us make fireballs let us uh, have uh, fun ascension mm. and uh, that uh, that experience uh, it took me away from the spirituality for good, I don't know, eight years. Mm. And uh, only after encountering Norse work and uh, the way he presents uh, esoteric concepts in, in 
undestructible manner, I would say, because uh, what uh, have captured me uh, was uh, the very fact that uh, with those fossil angels, I couldn't uh, deconstruct it. I, I had no critique which uh, could say that uh, more isn't right. And uh, that was uh, for me personally a relatively rare experience among those materials with, with which I was familiar at the moment. Mm. And, uh, what I also would like to say is that uh, I think that every person uh, has a creative spark. Mm. I uh, sincerely believe that art is one of the most pressure uh, gifts which we uh, have in our lives. And uh, for that reason, uh, I encourage every one of you to, if you don't have uh some way of the artistic expression of uh your inner world please find one you mm-hmm. cannot regret it's very important you you cannot like uh overestimate how uh healing and how uh crucial it may be mm-hmm. uh, anything you can draw stick figures exactly like, it will do powerfully. Uh, look at the wounds; there are stick figures. Exactly. Uh, I I've often told people like think about um, you know uh, arranging your furniture in an aesthetic manner. It doesn't have to be a. It doesn't have to follow a like feng shui or anything like that. It can just be like be creative. You know, like uh, externalize uh, those things which are boiling uh, within you. If, exactly. Uh, it's basically, I don't know, it's very, very important thing. Yeah. And uh, one thing which is uh, covered by that process is uh, the importance of experience of beauty on a regular basis. Um, um, because uh, the very... Uh, that's, that's the reason why uh, going for a walk outside is a very healing process because uh, mm-hmm. when you are uh, witnessing a semi-wild uh, environment like a park or uh, if you have the opportunity to go to the forest or to the mountains, uh, you are experiencing beauty and uh, it's healing you by the virtue of beauty. How th- That sounds weird. But uh, that works very well. That's one of the reasons why I uh, like to uh, have a tea ceremony every day because it's uh, my little, like, uh, sort of an island of beauty, yeah. which is constant uh, within my everyday life. So uh, I. No matter what is uh, happening around me, uh, the tea is uh, some sort of anchoring to that uh, little dosage of beauty for every day. You know, I used to do um, uh, just a, like a, a, a little Instagram story every day of the coffee I was drinking, yeah. uh, and I wasn't doing anything special with it. It was just a, a regular cup of coffee. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, that you've actually, um, that's, that's maybe a bit of a kick in the pants to, for me to, to, to bring that back, just that little celebration of something that I find beautiful and sharing it as a purely, um, as its own little ritual, you know, its own little moment of beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the moments of beauty in this conversation. This has been delightful. Um, uh, again... Oh yeah, I'm really happy to have you. I think I want to have you again. I think we 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 could probably just talk about one particular story of of Ellen Moore's or a point about the tarot and just just fill hours on that alone. Yeah. So um, so if uh, audience, if you're enjoying this, don't worry. There's going to be more. Um, this was just uh, just the beginning. Um, but again, yes, thank you so much for being on the show and. 
Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Audience, if there's anything that you uh, that you that, that is raised for you, please put it in the comments and uh, maybe we'll try to bring it up w uh, the next time we have them on. And I think with that, maybe we'll say goodbye for now. Um, and thank you very much. Thank Bye, everybody. You. Goodbye.